One of the most prominent translators of the Quran was Abdullah Yusuf Ali. While studying it carefully, I found a great number of errors with both his translations and explanations. Are these simple or deliberate errors? It is always important to point out to our listeners facts that may escape their attention. Based upon my 23 years of research, every single translation of the Quran carried by a follower of Muhammad is deliberately falsified so that the violent words and sentences are watered down to sound more reasonable and less aggressive. This is a concerted Islamic policy all over the world that continues even today in all languages to which the Quran has been translated. Abdullah Yusuf Ali is one of their worst offenders. I use the adjective worst because he was an extremely well-read and educated man who had also studied both the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament and was well versed in both of them. Nonetheless, he deliberately and repeatedly misused his knowledge to pervert both the meaning of words and the explanations of the verses from the Bible and the New Testament as I shall show. I would like first to enumerate the following facts that are never addressed by Muhammadan scholars for obvious reasons. With their very simple and primitive religion, the pagan Arabs, including Muhammad, before he married Khadija, knew absolutely nothing about the Bible or its stories. They knew nothing about Abraham, Ishmael, Moses, Garden of Eden, the creation story, Adam and Eve, Satan or Gabriel. Without the Bible to enlighten people, the Quran cannot make sense since there are no explanations or details concerning the characters, when and where they existed, and how they evolved historically. There is absolutely nothing of value in Muhammad's Quran, of concepts, precepts, thoughts or ideas that had not been plagiarized, plundered, pirated and or perverted from the traditions, fetishes and scriptures of the Jews, Christians, Zoroastrians and pagan Arabs. When the Quran was finally collected into a written book, it had no vowels and his words could be interpreted into several different meanings, causing a lot of confusion. Because of the several different meanings that added to the diversity of different versions of the readings of the Quran, it was canonized by Uthman into his version and then had six others that were compiled by several of the best of Muhammad's companions destroyed. So much for Allah's eternal words. The early manuscripts of the Quran did not have diacritics, vowels, thus compromising the meaning of the words. The initial and medial, noon, ta, sa, bi, and ya, were all written in exactly the same way. Thus, the word bait, meaning house, could be pronounced bint, girl, napt, plant, tibin, mulch, natub, repent. The vowels, diacriticals, necessary for the correct vocalization of the Quran were inserted by Al-Hajjaj bin Yusuf al saqafi who also added letters to the Quranic verses, thus actually altering the text as well as the meaning of the original words. Almost the entirety of the names of the biblical characters in the Quran, as well as the theological precepts and concepts, are based upon the Syrio-Aramaic and Hebrew languages and are not of Arabic origin. Thus, are incorrectly understood and translated in the Arabic of the Qur'an. Words and terms are invariably created and invented by humans only if and when there is a necessity to describe an item, an object, an action, or to express a thought or a concept. The pagan Arabs, with their very simple religion, did not need or have the technical words or terms that are necessary for a much more evolved belief system as was necessitated by the Qur'an. Moreover, it is invariably the dominant and more civilized power that loans technical words to a lesser one, such as that of the Arabs of the Hijaz in Muhammad's days, to describe complex precepts, concepts, and traditions. There are at least 118 of the most important religious and technical words and terms in the Qur'an that the Muhammadan exegetes, such as Sayyuti, Itqan, Al Tabaris Tafsir al Quran, Al Jawaliqis Mu'arrab, Al Sa'labis Kitab al Jawahar, and others fully recognized and frankly admitted that they are not Arabic in origin but loan words from Syriac Aramaic, Hebrew, Ethiopic, Persian, as well as Greek. Most of the loan words in the Quran 
are from the Syriac Aramaic of the Christian Arabs and the Hebrew of the Judaized Arabs, especially since Muhammad was acquainted with both of them through his commercial travels to Syria and his contacts with the Judaized Arabs of Medina. Example of loan words that are found in the Quran for which the Muhammadan philologists could not find an Arabic root are Kalala, Ra'ina, Sijin, Tasnim, Iblis, Al Samiri, Zanzabil, Salsabil, Ahbar, Asbat, to name just a few which are actually Aramaic in origin and one should not find their actual meaning in Arabic dictionaries but in Aramaic sources. The following demonstrations represent the committed agenda by Muhammadan scholars to deliberately water down, moderate, falsify, modify, and alter the meaning of Quranic words, their grammar, or their interpretation, so as to deceive the unwary and generally ignorant readers of the Quran's Arabic language regarding the actual and true meaning of these words. Al-Baqarah 2.162 Those who reject faith and die rejecting on them is Allah's curse and the curse of angels and of all of mankind. In Quranic Arabic, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَمَاتُوا وَهُمْ كُفَّارُوا are verbs in the past tense and not in the present or the future. But Abdullah Yusuf Ali deliberately changed them to the present and the future tenses, thus altering their meaning. On numerous occasions, the readers of Ali's Quran will discern his frustration at his inability to give the correct interpretation of a word or a verse by adding if, I think, perhaps, may mean. Taha 20.15 Verily the hour is coming, my design is to keep it hidden. Ukhfiha. In his commentary 2546, Ali tells us that Ukhfi may mean either to keep hidden or make it manifest. How is this logically possible to have two interpretations having opposite meanings to the same Quranic word? Al-Baqarah 2.72 Remember, you slew a man and fell into a dispute among yourselves. Both the translation and interpretation of this verse are wrong. Firstly, the word remember is not in the Arabic verse of the Quran. Secondly, in Quranic Arabic, وَإِذَا قَتَلْتُمْ نَفْسَدْ فَأَدْرَعْتُمْ فِيهَا The word adra'tum is Aramaic and means abhorrence, detestation, from the root dra' and does not mean dispute among yourselves. The verse should be translated to, if you murder a person and you become abhorred by that. Ali, in his commentary number 81, uses the very Bible that had allegedly been perverted by the people of the book, attempting to explain the unexplainable. He thus exhibits an obscene level of intellectual and theological hypocrisy prevalent among the absolute majority of Muhammadan scholars. The Quran identifies Maryam the mother of Jesus, with Maryam, the sister of Aaron, and Moses, and daughter of Imran. Maryam 19.27 At length, she brought the babe to her people carrying him. They said, O Mary, truly an amazing thing hast thou brought. O sister of Aaron, thy father was not a man of evil, nor thy mother a woman unchaste. Al-Tahrim 66.12 And Mary, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity. Ali's commentary is as follows in number 2481. Aaron, the brother of Moses, was the first in the line of Israelite priesthood. Mary and her cousin Elizabeth, the mother of Yahya John the Baptist, came of a priestly family and were therefore sisters of Aaron or daughters of Imran, who was Aaron's father. Nowhere in the New Testament is there any indication that either Mary or her cousin are descended from any priestly family, especially since her lineage, according to the fathers of the church, allegedly goes to King David. Moreover, the New Testament tells us that Elizabeth was only a kinswoman of Mary's without identifying any blood relationship. Al-Baqarah 2.104 O ye of faith, say not to the apostle words of ambiguous import, but words of respect. In Quranic Arabic, Ya ayyuha alladina amanu, la taqulu ra'ayna, وَقُولُوا أُنْظُرْنَا وَاسْمَعُوا وَلِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Ali offers the following commentary, number 106. The word disapproved is ra'ina, which as used by the Muslims means, please look at us, attend to us. But it was ridiculed by enemies by a little twist to suggest some insulting meaning. 
so an ambiguous word unzurna with the same meaning is suggested. Abdullah Yusuf Ali is grasping on straws to explain words that are Aramaic in origin and do not mean what the Muhammadan exegetes gave to them. Ra'ina means desire, attend to, watch, thought in Aramaic. The Aramaic unzurna actually means protect us. The translation of the verse should read, do not just say keep thinking of us, but also protect us. Ladies and gentlemen, there are hundreds upon hundreds more of such grammatical and linguistic errors that fill the Quran and the ignorance of its translators and commentators. Nothing in Muhammad's Quran is divine. Absolutely nothing.